Oh, my goodness. I am joined. If I pull this off, you guys are going to be more impressed with me. Um, OK. Um, good morning. We're going to start off by talking a little bit about the weather, because that's on everybody's minds. Um, with the extreme cold and chill that's coming this weekend, uh, MTA is taking steps to make to maintain the safety of our passengers, of our workforce, and also to make sure that the system will operate. Uh, Long Island Railroad and Metro North are having are, are bringing in a ton of extra people to make sure that they can, you know, they can be uh, paying attention to possible issues with the track, with the power, and the communication systems, um, and to you know, when the f if and when there are freezing of switches or other conditions that would impact on service, that they have plenty of people to go and deal with that quickly. The Long Island Railroad is keeping open its station waiting rooms throughout this cold snap to make sure, obviously, that people uh, who don't have somewhere else to go have a place to go. That is traditional on the railroad. Um, and I want to also emphasize bridges and tunnels. There are going to be some extreme uh, wind conditions. So MTA bridges and tunnels, uh, that's the tolled crossings within the city, are going to be doing a, a ban on, bridge, uh, on the bridges for empty tractors and tr tractor trailers and tandems um, from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. today. And the pedestrian rock walkways and most of these bridges are going to be closed because the, the wind conditions is just making it too, too dangerous. So we're paying a lot of attention to these weather conditions. And let, I'd like Rich to talk about what New York City Transit is doing. Yep. Thank you, Jano. You know, as Jano mentioned, obviously we're taking precautions and steps as well at New York City Transit. Uh, for the subway side, I think probably two areas that we'll focus on. One, much like the railroads, is debris, so we'll have debris crews available to the extent that there are any interruptions um, or debris that lands in our tracks. And then secondly, when you have extreme temperature uh, variations like we will, and going into the 50s next week, uh, track and, and uh, switches in, in particular are places that we'll have our emergency crews prepared uh, to the extent we have any switch or track issues. Uh, on the bus side, we'll obviously work uh, closely with the city to the extent there are any road closures, uh, this kind of temperature. You know, water main breaks aren't unusual either, so we'll keep a close eye on that with the city. And then we'll have uh, crews as well, making sure that our bus depots are, are functioning uh, in good shape as we continue to put service out. So we feel prepared, uh, but if there are interruptions or, or serv service changes, you know, we'll ask the, the public, our customers, to check our website and be patient with us to the extent those interruptions uh, do arise. Jano, back to you. Okay. Social services, when it gets this cold outside, a lot of people go into the stations, uh, particularly folks who live on the streets. Are there any additional teams being deployed to, to help them or well, the, yeah, them the, the, the and we work for, As you know, we work very closely with the city, and they are um, increasing the, the, the presence of outreach workers in the system. You know, in a code, what they call a code blue situation, we make sure that, you know, even if people are, are riding around, that no one's pushed out of the system because of... Um, you know, risk of exposure. So we have uh, extra, um, we have some extra uh, buses and vans at end of line stations, and we also change, you know, the pattern of how we deal with uh, even homeless folks who are who are sheltering on the system. It's finally gotten colder in the last couple of weeks. It's winter finally decided to show up. Have, have you guys noticed an uptick in folks who are homeless on the system? Or is no, that it's actually level? been pretty steady. We have a really powerful uh, outreach operation that's out there in, in partnership with the city. Uh, and it's much, uh, we're seeing many fewer people uh, sheltering in the system than we did a year ago. So that, that is uh, a pattern that's worth mentioning. Listen, let, let's, let's switch to the R211, because this is a fun and a great day. And I just want to, in addition to, everybody knows Rich Davey, the president of New York City Transit, and all you uh, uh, beat reporters certainly know Demetrius Critchlow, who runs the subway system. Um, at New York City Transit, but Steve Goodman is the regional administrator of the FTA and a huge and important partner for the MTA and for transit in the region, and uh, we're thrilled that Steve has joined us. Um, it's been a great week for the MTA. Governor Hochul's game-changing executive budget uh, announcement really um, 
was a shot in the arm for the riders. She stepped up for the riders, and more on that to come. But today we get to celebrate another great milestone as we prepare to unveil one of our new open gangway R211 subway cars. Um, in addition to Steve, I want to acknowledge a couple of folks from the Federal Transit Administration who are here with us, Joan Yan and Pam Lee. Joan, Pam, thank you for coming. Thank you for being so involved with this initiative for the new cars. Um, upgrading rolling stock is one of the pillars of the MTA's $55 billion capital program. We have $6 billion for new rolling stock uh, in the plan because New Yorkers always want and deserve uh, train cars that haven't lived through eight presidents like our beloved R46s. Our, we do love the R46s. We love the color scheme. We love the old timiness but it's time for them to go for a swim. Um, the new R211s are going to give riders a more modern passenger experience. Much more modern, and I'll tell you why. Um, open gangway. They have the soft accordion walls um, that allow the, the entire train set to be connected so people can move from one car to another smoothly. Um, not every car in this order that we've got uh, is open gangway, but we're excited to see how they're going to perform. On top of being modern, the R211s are essential to the signaling initiatives. Remember, modern signaling, what we call CVTC, requires cars that have uh, those, those digital systems to communicate with the signals. Um, and that modern signaling allows us to run more trains safely and closer together. Anybody ride the number seven? Two-minute headways in the peak, two-minute headways. That's because the number seven is one of the few lines that we have a fully modernized signal system. But back to the R211, uh, the R211s behind us. The testing of these cars is already underway. We expect the open gangway cars to enter passenger service sometime in the last quarter of this year. So keep eyes peeled. In the meantime, we're waiting the rest of our delivery from Kawasaki. We are holding their feet to the fire. I am sympathetic to all everybody who has had supply chain issues and labor issues coming out of the pandemic. It's real. We are sympathetic. But it's our job to insist that the contracts be adhered to. Um, and we are on top of them every day. We are sending people out to Lincoln, Nebraska to watch them and make sure they're doing it well uh, because the, our passengers are waiting for these cars. Um, in fairness, Kawasaki has built some of the really successful car classes in our workhorses of the MTA fleet, the, R2, the R62s, the R68As, the R142As, and we're determined to maintain this partnership. They are a great manufacturer for us, and we want to build on the relationship. So with that, let me turn it over to the one and only president of New York City Transit, Rich Davey. Uh, well, again, thanks all for, for coming today. Thanks, Jana, for the introduction. Uh, just a couple other uh, comments I want to make. First, you know, our passengers, our customers are going to be excited to board these trains in the coming months. Better features, wider doors, for example, to improve uh, uh, customers getting on and off our trains more quickly. Better background in terms of stations, uh, better passenger amenities, uh, for example, for our customers who are disabled, there will be specific spaces designated for those customers. Um, cameras, we've talked about cameras on our subway uh, network and our subway system. All of these cars will come with cameras uh, to ensure safety of our customers. Um, and we're looking forward to accepting customers uh, on these open gangway cars. Uh, as Jano said, later this year, likely on the A and the C. So coming soon for customers on the A and C. Um, yeah, the guy is, as the chairman likes, uh, to remind us, his favorites. Uh, well, he, do you have a favorite? I have no favorite. He has no favorite, except. But the IND's got to get better. But the IND's got to get, exactly, exactly. Um, I do want to thank Demetrius and Sue and the entire team at New York City Transit with our partners at Kawasaki who continue to test uh, and put through uh, all the rigors of, of this equipment as we get, um, you know, as we will get this um, equipment out. Um, I do want to ask uh, Steve Goodman to say a few words. I mean, as Jano said, we wouldn't be doing a lot of what we're doing in our system without the partnership of the federal government. And Steve represents uh, 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 District 2, 
um, and um, Region 2, I should say, and has been a huge partner with us uh, and continues to, uh, to find ways to provide us with new resources to invest in our system. So Steve's been a great partner, and I'll invite him to say a few words. Steve. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. It's great to be here, and uh, thank you, Jano, for those kind words, and, and thank you for your leadership, as well as uh, Rich Davies and the rest of his leadership, as well as the rest of the MTA team. And I want to thank the, MT, the MTA's organization as a whole uh, for organizing today's event. I, I am here on behalf of the FTA Administrator, Noria Fernandez, as well as the U.S. Department of Transportation, uh, Secretary uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg uh, to celebrate the unveiling of New York City Transit's R211s, which represents an exciting milestone for one of the largest transit infrastructure projects in the United States. I don't want to date myself, but I have to say that these cars will be replacing some of the cars that I actually used to ride as a child uh, back in the mid-70s, so just to put that in perspective. So this is a critical project. It's a game changer for the long overdue, and it's also long overdue, and we're proud to be partners with the MTA to deliver for New Yorkers and the riding public. To put the project in a little more context, it's one of the largest ever supported by the Federal Transit Administration to date. The federal government has invested over $2.8 billion toward the purchase of about 1,175 rail cars, uh, some of which are the ones behind us now. This investment is in addition to the $14 billion that the Biden-Harris administration has awarded as part of the bipartisan infrastructure law that we've supported over 3,600 transit projects nationwide, coast to coast. This new fleet will help carry New Yorkers to work, school, health care, and all the places that make this city the best place on earth. These rail, car rail cars, as they mentioned, are designed to improve the customer experience. They include numerous state-of-the-art features and technologies that align with many of the goals of the FTA and the Biden administration. The cars will have improved accessibility features, uh, digital uh, customer information displays, and wider doors to help reduce the backlog on platforms by nearly 30 percent. They will have improved safety features such as security cameras, illuminated door opening alerts, new IT systems that will help detect and address critical breakdowns on trains, and they'll also be commercial-based. They'll have the communications-based train control system capability, which will help the trains travel safely and more frequently. The project represents another prime example of the successful collaboration and strong partnership between the MTA and the FTA as we work together to deliver for New Yorkers. I want to thank Jano and his team for advancing this project to this exciting milestone as they have reached today, that we've reached today. And as Jano mentioned, I also want to recognize my team at the regional office that just works tirelessly for all the New Yorkers to have these kinds of experiences. And, and John, uh, we have June and Pam over there that Jano already highlighted. And thank you for your time, and I look forward to riding uh, these rail cars later today. Thank you. All right. Let's ride. How badly, how, sorry. Uh, how cold are we? <laughs> how much did the issues with uh, labor at Kawasaki set this project back? We were expecting this in about uh, 2000, 2021, and here we are several years later. Listen, the, you know, it, here's the good news. The MTA capital program, all the projects you're hearing about, we never stopped. We never stopped. We didn't let labor, we didn't let parts and supply chain and all that stuff get in the way of finishing the MTA projects. But in other parts of the country, supply chain, labor problems did impact on schedule. Kawasaki building rail cars did get delayed. We are now are putting their feet to fire is a nice way to put it. We are insisting that they fix things and get the deliveries back on schedule. That's where we are. We want, today is a good milestone, though, because they have managed to deliver a significant number of this order. That's what we're celebrating today.
It's a made-for-TV look. Thank you very much. Uh, so how often do you turn over the subway cars, and, and are you turning them over more frequently in recent years than you have been uh, in previous years? Just to give us a sort of a broader perspective, let's say, uh, now compared to, you know, 40, yeah, I mean, 50 years ago. I, mean, I think the short answer is, is, is we haven't been turning over enough, right? The cars that these will replace qualify for their AARP card in 18 months <laughs> to give you a sense of how old they are, right? Um, I mean, a car should last, it, depending on how often you're overhauling it, 25 to 40 years. These are going to be replacing 50-year-old cars. I mean, I think the answer is, like, at least in my experience, in the, for transit systems, and I think this is why Jano's leadership and the FTA's leadership is so important, is we build in new shiny things, which are critically important, but we sometimes forget about the state of good repair. And the capital plan here at MTA is about 80% of state of good repair, which includes cars like this. So it's expansion, but it's also the ADA accessibility and investing in, um, in, in equipment like this, which is so critical. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Subways had a tremendous month. January was the best month we've had in 10 years. And I don't mean the last 10 Januarys. I mean the last 10 years. But one of the challenges we have is keeping these old cars in service. And so this will help deliver better service for our customers. Yeah, it's shiny and it's new, but it's all about delivering better service. This will do that. Okay. All right. You might have said this, I'm freezing, so I can't process thoughts. Um, you mentioned by the end of this year, how many trains like this can we expect to see? So for, for, the, uh, for, for these open gangways, we have, we have two train sets, so 20 full cars, so the one we'll ride in a moment will be out. But we also have uh, traditional R211s, if you will, so traditional train cars. There'll be uh, a couple of dozen out eventually. We also have new trains uh, for Staten Island as well, so Staten Island will be seeing some new. So you'll see them sprinkled throughout the system in the coming 12, 18 months. Okay, what, lines? Uh, what lines? So Staten Island and uh, the A and C. Hi, everybody. The, the end of the line is, what, about a 1,000 cars. Uh, when might uh, we see that? Are we still on track to get to kind of that full order, and will there be more of the open gangway thing? So what are we going to see kind of over the next couple of years? Is this the model that we could expect to, to be kind of what the, the new car is? So the open gangway is a pilot. So we, as I said, ordered uh, two full sets, so 20 cars. We'll be piloting that over the next uh, several months. Um, but in the meantime, we're continuing to, as you mentioned, order uh, and continue to exercise options with Kawasaki uh, as well. So we'll be seeing, I think, 1,100 total cars from Kawasaki in the next 18 months. We're also, I mean, the other more traditional R211s we've had for months now that we've been testing on property as well. The open gangway is, you know, in service on so many other stations. What are you going to be looking, what are you going to be looking at here with the open gangway? Why couldn't it, uh, why isn't that part of the uh, initial order? Get them all rolling out since so many other systems have those. Yeah, I mean, so so some systems have them. Not not every. Uh, we'd be, I think, the second or third in North America to to roll it out. In fact, historically, I think there were open gangways in the 20s, 30s, and 40s here. Um, but uh, it's all about testing to make sure that under the current conditions. I mean, as you know, this is a hundred. Uh, and 10-year-old plus system. So under the current conditions, does it make sense? We'll look at it from a safety perspective and, and others, but uh, that's all we bought them, to see if they work. Okay. Right, so, so, yeah, I mean, R Davey's from Boston, so he can stand out here all day, but I don't think the rest of you want to. Let's get on the car. What, oh, what's, no. what's the timeline for making the decision on more open gangway cars or not? Because there's an option that has to get exercised at some point, right? Yeah, the, the chairman's going to give me the hook. So the, quickly, um, I mean, you know, this will be the first inaugural ride today. We'll be running these over the next several months. I mean, I, it's going to be a process for sure. Um, and then obviously we'll look at it in the context of our future capital plans as well from a, from a uh, perspective of what we're purchasing. The, the all right, thanks everybody. We're going to take a train ride. For those watching on the live stream, we will be live streaming the train ride, so you have that to look forward to. Thanks everybody.
Okay, all right.